a small, freshly decorated flat, perfect for one person, or perhaps a couple with no ambitions to begin a family. Everything a singleton could want. Tomo had lived in his very own first flat for a year, a place he could call his own. He entered the flat, slowly but surely, and quite possibly expecting something to jump out from behind the door to surprise him. He seems unhappy as he turns and walks down the hall towards the kitchen. All thoughts of a romantic evening disappearing with each step down the hall. Once in the kitchen, Tomo began to empty the bits and pieces from his groceries out of the bag and places them onto the kitchen counters and into the cupboards. He then makes his way to the fridge and opens it to stare into its cold spaces. Oh, Christ. Milk. Not the fucking milk. Tomo sounded resigned. His omission from the shopping, the missing milk, was just another brick in the wall that might break this camel's back. Should I put it in my basket? Reasoned Tomo, as he turned and looked up towards the heaven as if expecting some divine intervention. How could I forget the milk? Blinky likes to have a gallon of milk in his tea. Tomo runs his fingers through his hair as if to rub away the disappointment. Then he reaches for the scissors to open the newly purchased pack of sausages. He carefully... Hurry up now. Come on. He then carefully places them into the frying pan and turns on the gas hob. He always cooked sausages on the highest heat in the frying pan. How could I forget the milk? The one thing I needed for Blinky coming over. Blinky was not the flat's cat, as you may be thinking. Rather, the so-called Blinky was Tomo's partner in crime. Tomo shook his head in disbelief, as if heaven had let him down once more. He wanted the beer that he knew was still in the fridge. Thankfully, Tomo is mindful that alcohol is poison and stops himself from drinking the beer. Right again, ha <laughs> ha! What do you mean, right again? I've got the beer, you fucker! Hello? You still there? Tomo was addressing no one in particular. He began looking around, searching the ceiling in anticipation of seeing something. He didn't know what. He'd still hear you, you pawns. He protested he could hear a voice, despite there being no one else in the flat. Of course there's no one here. It's because I'm so radio rental because of what Blinky's done. Tomo exclaimed. Blinky's actions seem to have upset our host. Madness is his only explanation because... There's got to be someone here taunting me, taking the piss. Otherwise I would be admitting to my own madness. Interrupted Tomo a little rudely, his tone becoming more exasperated as he opens the beer. Fuck off! Stop being rude. Let me finish, Tomo. He then leans against the kitchen counter and continues to sip on his beer. Sip on his beer. This is the first time he has admitted to hearing a voice. Usually he'd just ignore them. Mm -mm. He begins humming mm -mm. tunelessly to mm -mm. the tune... It's not tuneless, it's Robbie Williams. But let's face it, he wasn't being fair to the British pop icon Robbie Williams. Tomo thinks he's humming the song Angels. So, do I? Am I? He then continues to timelessly hum the Robbie Williams hit. So what? Shouted Tomo as he continued to hum before lifting and filling the kettle with water from the tap. So what? said the voice. So what? repeated the voice. Tomo thinks that the voice is that of an angel. No, I don't. Exclaimed Tomo. He can't understand why the voice is following him. Thinking the voice was a ghost was just too scary, so he thinks it's an angel. I don't think so. Protested Tomo, clutching both his ears. His subconscious continued humming the tune. The voice? Began Tomo, a little agitated. I know that voice. It's familiar. I definitely know it for somewhere. Continued Tom. It's my voice. Soundtrack in my life. Tomo was trying not to shout, but his tone was abrasive, 
And he continued to interrupt the voice. You are in my head. I cannot hear you. You are my madness. I imagine you. You are me. I invented you. And I can get rid of you. Bollocks, shouted the voice, mocking Tomo. Tomo needed proof that the voice did not come from within him. Prove I'm talking bollocks. How can you prove it? The doorbell rings, and Tomo is amazed. Tomo was delighted for a moment. Here it is. The doorbell, of course. Ding fucking dong. The smile wiped from Tomo's stupid face. What lies behind the door, he wondered, as he moved slowly down the hall, the grin replaced by something less grinny. He continues apprehensively making his way out the kitchen, into the hallway, and towards the front door. Who's there? He called out, his attention fully turned to the doorbell ringing. He wonders who may be seeking to enter his Spartan existence to join him in the lonely flat. As he walks slowly along the hallway, his mind full of possibilities. Maybe it was just the police, or perhaps a postman with a parcel, or perhaps that Harry Potter wand lost in transit then found again, or is it maybe Blinky come to visit, or perhaps he was thinking how did the voice know that the bell would ring? A little scared, he decided... I'm no scared. Yes, you are, Tomo. Those reasoning words didn't work for him. He stood at the door, shaking with fear. He reached for the door handle and quietly counted to five before opening. He always counted to five when he was about to pull off an elastoplast or remove a scalp, or even igniting the gas on the cooker. Five! Tomo swung open the door, and there he was confronted by his dear friend and business associate Blinky Burns, a local Gallus gangster who refused to answer to the name bestowed upon him by the big gangsters in the bar ale of Button Burns on account of his size. Button constantly resented being a diminutive guy. As a result, what there was of him was filled with malice and vindictiveness. No words are exchanged between the two friends as they move into the living room. Nothing at all, which is odd for two friends. Perhaps something was weighing on their mind. Everything go okay? Asked Tomo of his blinking friend. Aye, so sorted, my son. Cool. Said Tomo. What did you do with the gun? Questioned the nervous gangster. Send the canal. The weapon used to rob and then murder a 70-year-old shopkeeper had to be got rid of. A crappy Kruger .22 handgun now resting among the reeds and sediment of the Fourth and Clyde Canal. The robbery deprived the man's daughters and sons of a father and a grandfather. Blinky had pulled the trigger. There had been no need to fire out but Blinky wanted to see what kind of a mess the crappy Kruger would make. They had planned the whole insidious episode together. What the fuck is that? Shouted the teeny-weeny Glasgow hard man. What the fuck is what? Oh, you mean that cunt? Are you taking the piss, Blinky? Tomo appeared confused by his friend's expletive-rich question, and no doubt the account of their crime was still rather... Unsettling. That man, the voice. Can't you hear the fucking voice? What are you talking about, Blanky? What voice? Lied Tomo to his miniature mate. The panic had set in with Tomo as he waited for his sausages to cook. You can hear it there just now. The voice just told me you're lying and I'm cooking sausages. Can he smell sausages? You're the only other person here, Blinky. I can't hear a thing. And the sausages won't be long. Which was partly true. Blinky the gangster and Tomo were physically in the room. The only people in the room. A disembodied voice could hardly be described as present. Or could it? The sausages would never be ready to eat. 
The time has come, my friends, for the fat lady to sing. What fat lady? Did that fat bitch eat your sausages? Tomo rose from his semi-recumbent position and made his way to the living room door. However, he found that he was unable to open it. He immediately felt like he was trapped. I'm getting fucked right now. Stop fucking around. Open the fucking door. Claustrophobic in here now. Calm down, Burns. Just a bit of stuff. Out the window. Alas, Blinky found that he was unable to rise from the couch. Fastened with an invisible seatbelt. A power far greater than he could imagine. What the fuck is this voodoo? As Tomo and Blinky struggle against unseen powers at work, their only concern seems to be the fate of the sausages and leaving the flat. You see everyone being visited by the Dark Angel is of no concern to them. Hell is only a short skip and a jump away. No problem cooking sausages there, I can promise you that. <laughs> What neither realizes is that the sausages were never cooked by Tomo because the gas was never ignited under the frying pan. Only when Blinky tried to unsuccessfully light a cigarette, the gas ignited. The flat and its odious criminals were blown to smithereens, killing them both in a single second. The souls have still to come to terms with their deaths, and I will never let them. <laughs> I sit and wait Does an angel Contemplate my fate And do they know The places where we go When we're grey and old As I've been so